Well, it's being recorded. <laughs> okay, try now. All right, can you, I'm on now. There you are. Good morning. Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. Good morning. I would like to call this virtual meeting of the Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board to order. Generally, public bodies are prohibited from meeting electronically under the provisions of the Freedom of Information Act, known as FOIA. However, language approved by the governor and the General Assembly in Chapter 552 of the 2021 Special Acts Number 1, Acts of the Assembly, allow us to move forward with certain restrictions that I will outline. Before I review these provisions, please let me take a moment to review how this meeting will work. We want to allow for participation by board members, staff, and members of the public who wish to comment. However, it is essential that we are able to manage the conversation effectively. I am chairing this meeting today from the DCR offices in downtown Richmond. I have with me Christine Watlington Jones, Blair Gordon, and Lisa McGee. They will assist with presentations, responding to comments, and the overall coordination of the meeting. Please be patient with us, as you already have. As we work through this, we understand and appreciate the challenges. Chapter 552 of the 2021 Special Session Number 1 Acts of the Assembly, also known as the Budget Bill, include language addressing the ability of public bodies to conduct electronic meetings without the need of a quorum being present in a single physical location, known as an electronic meeting. The Budget Bill allows public bodies to hold electronic meetings when the governor has declared a state of emergency pursuant to Virginia Code 44-1. 46.17 if, number one, the nature of the declared emergency makes it impractical or unsafe for the public body or governing board to assemble in a single location, and two, the purpose of the meeting is to discuss or transact the business statutorily required of necess and necessary to continue operations of the public body and the discharge of its lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities, subsection 4 dash zero dot one gulf. The budget bill also has language regarding recording and transcriptions of electronic meetings. Please be advised that this meeting is being recorded. This recording will be available to the public through the DCR website. The comments in the chat room will also be presented as a public, preserved as a public record. Official minutes of the meeting will be drafted and posted in accordance with the regular procedures. The budget bill does not allow the board to hold an electronic meeting to discuss or transact business for any purpose. Rather, they may do so as long as the agenda items that the public body plans to take up are A, statutorily required, and B, necessary to continue operations and discharge lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. It is the board's responsibility to determine whether the nature of the declared emergency makes it impractical or unsafe for the public body or governing board to assemble in a single location. At the conclusion of my remarks, I will ask for a motion for the board to make this determination. If that motion fails, this electronic meeting will end at that point. The budget bill requires compliance with provisions of code 2.2-3708.2 Therefore, in accordance with 2.2.3708.2 Delta 2, but public bodies must include a telephone number that may be used to notify the public body of any interruption of telephonic or video broadcasts of the media. In the event that a disruption occurs, please contact Ms. Lisa McGee by phone or text at 804-512-1758. We'll put that number in the chat box. Additionally, if there is an interruption in the broadcast, the meeting must be suspended until public access is restored. Those provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act not addressed by the budget bill remain in effect. Before we continue with the business portion of the meeting, I will ask Lisa to call the role of the board members and anticipated staff. Other participants will be recorded through the chat window. If you are participating by phone or your name is not called, please call or text Lisa McGee at 804-512-1758. In addition, if any time you lose connection or are unable to reconnect, please contact Ms. McGee at the same number. I will now turn to Ms. McGee for calling of the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Mr. Arneson? Present. Mr. Wilson? Present. Mr. Ford? Present. Ms. Mason? Present. Ms. Blunt? Present. Ms. Mayberry? Dr. O'Brien? Present. Mr. Newton? Yes, I'm here. Present. Mr. Albertson? Thank you. We have a quorum. Now, the motion to continue states the Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board certifies that the nature of the declared COVID-19 emergency makes it impractical or unsafe for the board to assemble in a single location, and further that the agenda items to be taken up at this meeting are necessary to continue operations and discharge lawful purposes and duties and responsibilities of this board. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, this is Adam Wilson, and I'll make that motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? This is Kat Mabry. I second. There you go. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will ask Lisa to call the roll. Aaron Armisen. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, nay. Aye. Mr. Olson? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Mason. Mason. Aye. Mayberry. Aye. Doctor O'Brien. Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. Mr. Albertson? Okay. The motion passes. I want to explain further how we will handle the participants by board, staff, and public. Everyone except the individual presenting materials for an agenda item will be muted. Once the presentation is completed, the board members and only board members will be unmuted for discussion. Lisa, Christine, and Blair will assist me with ensuring that the board members are recognized when they have questions or comments. As needed, staff will be unmuted to address questions or concerns. Members of the public will be asked to, uh, to ask questions and provide input by utilizing the chat box function. As time allows, we will respond to those questions and comments. We will now proceed with the business of the board. Thank you, everyone, for being patient while we got online this morning. First order of business is the approval of the minutes of the April 21, 2021 meeting. What's the board's pleasure? Mr. Chairman, this is Adam Wilson, and I'll make the motion to approve the minutes from April 21, 2021. Mr. Chair, Thank you. This is Charles Newton. I'll second that motion. Thank you very much. We have a motion has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I will ask Lisa to call the roll. All in favor say aye. Those opposed, nay. Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Mason? Aye. Donkey Blunt? Aye. Mayberry? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. Thank you. The motion passes. Next order of business is a report from our director, Clyde Christman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to all. Um, so just a couple quick things to report. One that's very relevant to your business at hand today and that uh, you might recall at the last meeting I mentioned to you something historic happened in the passing of the budget this year in that when the governor sent down some 18 amendments to the General Assembly and they accepted all his amendments with no changes, the, the budget bill actually became effective 
um, on, on that date. Um, another historic thing happened, and that is that we now have chapter 952, um, and you'll see that in the reference to some of the materials that you'll be approving later, this is the actual chapter for the Appropriation Act for 2021. But what's interesting is that the state budget, I never thought I'd see this in my career, we now have two volumes because it got too big for one volume. So if you're interested in your looking, it's in chapter 552 and DCR's budget is actually in volume two because uh, again, they outgrew uh, the, the phone book got thicker. So, um, but that, that good news is that you do have the authority today to move forward with the necessary business at hand to allocate your FY22 office and admin and TA funding as well as the, um, the, the cost share funding for FY22, which is very important. Um, the other announcement that I want to make, Mr. Chairman, if I could ask for your indulgence, I'd like to turn to Russ Baxter for us to make an announcement. Uh, thank you, Clyde, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess it's easy to say, but hard to get out, of, get the words right. Um, I'm retiring. Um, and so this will be the last board meeting uh, that I'll be attending. I would just make a point of personal privilege, if you'll allow me, Mr. Chairman. Um, Certainly. One of the, the joys, I, I've been around a long time. When I first started working in and around state government, A.L. Philpott was speaker and Jerry Belisles was governor. So I've been around a while, not as long as Clyde and Daryl, I think, but uh, a while. And uh, I've seen and done and had the opportunity to do things in my career that I never expected. I've been extremely lucky. And one of the joys of this career has been the opportunity not only to have worked at DCR in the early part of this century, um, but also to come back to DCR. It felt like coming home. And one of the most enjoyable aspects of this job has been to work with this board and the dedicated people that serve on it. You know, I get paid for what I do, y'all don't. Um, and I respect that the time uh, and effort and commitment to the people of the Commonwealth and to its natural resources that you do every day, not only in your roles as district directors, in, as the case may be, um, but particularly your roles as members of this board. And I just want to thank each and every one of you. I also want to thank the staff and management at DCR. Um, I, I told the leadership team this uh, when I made my official announcement uh, earlier this month. Uh, DCR, in my view right now, is as good as it's ever been. Um, I think that's a tribute to Clyde, and it's also a tribute to everybody right on down the line from senior management to the folks uh, at the lowest rungs uh, of the pay scales. So I have so much appreciated the collegiality and the work that this agency accomplishes. And frankly, I'm going to miss it. Um, I will be officially retiring as of September 1st. However, uh, I will only be working until the end of July and then burning off uh, accumulated annual leave uh, in the month of August. And so all I can say is uh, thank you. It's been a great ride. You might see me pop up every now and again on something or other, who knows what the future holds, um, but it's been a most enjoyable career. And I'm sorry to see it come to an end, but I'm also, looking forward to a, uh, a happy, healthy, and productive retirement. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for uh, at the time to say those few words and, and thanks to you all. Thank, thank you, Russ. Uh, as, as, as a personal note, you've been there every time I've asked and you've saved my bacon many, many times. And so I still may have to call you for advice in the future. So that's what Jim Eccles okay. tells me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Is, is that all? Mr. Chairman, if, 
if I could just following up on that, first of all, I really want to congratulate Russ uh, on on uh, all he's accomplished in his many years uh, in state government. And it's been an honor to have him as our deputy director over both our soil and water and conservation and dam safety and floodplain management programs. Um, Y'all might recall Russ is only the second person to have held this position. The first was 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 Dave Dowling. And when Dave passed away, we we knew it was going to be some big shoes to fill. And Russ has really stepped in and and done a great job. Um, and to that end, because this is such a critical position, as Russ just light, laid out the time frame, um, I was approved yesterday by the administration to begin the process for recruiting to to fill the position. And so we're going to be allowed to do something that is known as double incumbency, which means that while Russ's official retirement isn't set till September 1st, that we're going to work to have a, a formal replacement in, uh, uh, in, in place. That's our goal anyways, before Russ at retires so that we have uh, total continuity uh, in this extremely important position. So I expect that you will see that position to be posted uh, either by the end of this week or the beginning of next week, uh, if if not uh, by Friday this week. So just wanted to 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 mention that. And uh, again, I, my my heartfelt uh, appreciation and um, my Godspeed and best wishes to Russ. I do know where Russ lives. If anybody's looking for him after he, ret he retires. And, and I think the DEQ side of the household is still going to be available to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> D, DEQ is not retiring, just DCR in this house. <laughs> so thank you for your indulgence, Mr. Chairman. Not a problem. Thank you. And thanks again, Russ, for all you've done. Right, moving on. The next item is uh, approval of a project funded by Dam Safety, Flood Prevention, and Protection Assistance, item D on the Good morning, everyone. Um, Christine, do you need to uh, introduce or do you want me to just go ahead and get started? Just go ahead and get started. All righty. Thank you. Thank you all. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, the Dam Safety Flood Prevention and Protection Assistance Grant was open for applications from February 26th. I'm sorry, from November 1st through February 26th of 2021, um, we received 77 applications totaling um, project cost of $2,386,860.80. Total amount requested from the fund was $1,286,262.40. As you recall from your um, approval of the grant manual back in September, we had $1 million available for grants. So our uh, the applications exceeded our available allocation by $286,262.40. There were 73 applications for dam safety projects totaling $1,158,909.40. Four projects for floodplain management or flood protection and persist assistance projects, totaling $127,353. We are recommending approval for 55 dam safety projects, totaling $656, I'm sorry, $656,039.35. And two flood prevention and protection projects totaling $70,000. Um, so that's a total of 57 projects that we are recommending approval for, totaling $726,039.35. You've been provided a list of those projects that have been approved, as well as explanations for any reductions in what was requested, as well as the list of applications were that were denied and you have a motion in front of you to um, review and approve are there any questions about the data that's been presented uh, hearing none we'll proceed you have the motion in front of you i'll paraphrase it it's the soil water conservation board approves 57 grant applications for a total of 
$39.35 as recommended by the department. All grants may be on a reimbursed basis. All grant agreements are required to be completed in 12 months. In the event that above applications fail to execute a grant agreement, they have 90 days uh, to notify the department. So the motion, the department is authorized to communicate this approval to the Virginia Resources Authority so that VRA review of applications may proceed. The department is also authorized to take any action necessary to proceed with the closing and administration of grants subsequent to VRA's approval of the application. That is the motion. What is the board's pleasure? Mr. Chairman, this is Adam Wilson. I'll make such motion. Kristen Sackett-Blunk, second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Um, Mr. Chairman, this is Pam Mason. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, go ahead, Pam. I mean, last month I, I could do it with my audio, and this month I can't. Never know what I'm going to get. Life is a box of chocolates. But um, I do have questions for the um, dam break safety zone um, mapping. Is that mapping going to be? You think it's going to be on GIS or some geospatial information? And will that information come back? to DCR and be able to be incorporated into the VFRIS, the information, risk information system? At, at the current time, thank you for that question. At the current time, the dam break inundation zone mapping is done using a variety of software, some GIS, LIDAR, HECRAS, HEC, HEC HMS modeling. And that data is stored in the dam safety inventory system. Um, there are plans for access to that information to our Virginia flood risk information system. But currently in VFRIS, dam points are available. We are working to get the dam break inundation zone layer incorporated into VFRIS as well. OK, great. Uh, thank you. Is there any other comments or questions? If not, I'll ask Lisa to call the roll. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Chairman Arneson? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Uh, Ford? Aye. Mason? Aye. Kathy Vaughn? Aye. Avery? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. Thank you. The motion passes. Next order of business is um, item E on the agenda approval of the Soil Water Conservation Administration and Operation Funds and Allocations for FY22. Um, this document is the same as what was presented to y'all in April with the exception of um, I have inserted the correct chapter numbers for the reference to the 2021 Appropriations Act. Other than that, it is the same. Okay. All right. So we've had two months to, to read this and digest numbers. <laughs> this is an admin. Yeah. Mr. So, Chair, uh, I'd like to move that we uh, Make the recommended motion that we approve the policy on the Soil and Water Conservation District admin and uh, operations funding for fiscal year 20, 2022. Thank you. Do I have a second? Ma'am Mason, second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Those nay, I'll ask Lisa to call the roll. Jeremy Johnson? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Uh, Ford? Aye. Ms. Mason? Aye. Dr. Funk? Aye. Ms. Nagari? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. Thank you very much. The motion passes. Next item of business is the approval of the administration ops support agreement for fiscal year. Go ahead. 
Go ahead, Christine. Again, um, with the exception of two minor changes, this is the same document that was presented to y'all in April. A date reference was corrected on page four. Um, and on page 10, the reference to submission of the budget template was stricken to mirror the removal of the requirement on page six. Um, I mentioned that at the April meeting as well. This just documents that recommendation. Okay. Is there any other uh, questions for staff? All right, hearing none, the motion is to approve the department DCR in uh, Virginia Soil Water Conservation District Administration and operations agreement for fiscal year 2022. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved, Kristen Saki Blanc. Thank you. Second, second, Delia. Thank you. Motion is moved and second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will ask Lisa to call the roll. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Chairman Arneson? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Ms. Mason? Aye. Ms. Saki Blunt? Aye. Ms. Mayberry? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. The motion passes. Our next one <laughs> is the approval of the soil water conservation cost share and TA funding for fiscal year 2022. Uh, Christine. Um. Overall, this is the same document Document you all saw in April. There are a couple um, minor corrections. Again, um, the correct chapter number has been inserted for the 2021 Appropriations Act. Um, there were some clarifying changes made on pages 25 and 29. The question um, was asked what we meant by all funding. Um, let's see if I can get there. Um, when we were talking about allocations. So we have tried to make it very clear that when we were talking about reallocation of cost share, we were talking about um, the technical assistance above the base technical assistance is returned to the department um, at a proportional rate. Um, one, we may wanted to make clear that the base technical assistance stays with the district, and two, that it's the proportionality um, that goes of the technical assistance that goes with the cost share. Um, additionally, to mirror that um, on page 29, if I can get there, um, we struck the reference to the 90% um, grant deliverable of cost share funds because it's referenced in the section I was just in, and this just adds to confusion. We're really talking about all sorts of state funds. It's not linked to the cost share necessarily. Um, the following the submission to the district's end of year cost share report, really that is how this process works. That is how the funds that need to be returned to the department um, is determined. And there is one sentence that was moved to later in the paragraph. It didn't necess doesn't necessarily fit where it was. Um, none of these changes functionally changed anything. It was just truly clarifying language. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Yes, I have one. Um, this is Charles Newton. Christine, I, I think I understand what you've done to try to clarify, but I, I do want to ask if a district uh, obligates 90% or more of its cost share funding, are they allowed to keep the technical assistance for the full 100% of, yes. of no. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay. 
The motion is uh, for the Soil and Water Classroom Basic Board to approve the policy and procedures of the cost share and technical assistance funding allocation. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, this is Adam Wilson. I'll make the motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Charles Newton. Thank you. Uh, is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, this is Jay Ford here. Um, so I, over the last couple of weeks, I've been taking a look at the grant agreement. This is essentially um, one of the only opportunities we have to put down expectations and hopes um, in, in on paper and tie it to um, the purse strings and something that's been sitting on my mind and I think the minds of of many of the districts and uh, folks in the agricultural sector is how we get at this question of expanding the universe of participants in the program and um, meeting or initiating work to meet this state's uh, DEIJ objectives. And um, it's my conversations with staff have made it clear that it is not at all an easy question. And um, while I had intended to offer some uh, amending language today, I think the wise and, and sageness of uh, staff opinions have convinced me that we, this is a question that they need time to work on with both the um, OAG and internally about what what exactly does a DEIJ initiative look like in the context of cost share? Um, that's, I think, a very unsettled question. And there's some fantastic work going on uh, at the district level. There's some fantastic outreach work going on that I had the privilege to um, sit in on last week from the agency. But um, again, this is the document where we kind of put down the marker for expectations. And um, so what I'd like to suggest um, after consulting with, with staff is that in addition to voting on this, we ask the agency to take some time and work with the OAG's office to develop some language proposals, um, some options for potential language to be included in the grant agreement or, you know, or a recommendation on other places this would be more appropriately discussed. So, um, but I would like us to not miss the opportunity um, to direct action while we have this grant agreement in front of us. And so um, that's a long way of summarizing many conversations over the last couple of weeks. But uh, what I'm essentially asking for is in addition to passing this grant manual, we include direction to the agency to um, to develop language for consideration in December. Jay, if I could interject for two things. One, um, this is on the, we're, we're approving the board policy, which doesn't include the grant deliverables. Um, I think it would be helpful if we could approve the policy. I actually um, drafted a, draft motion um, with Daryl and Russ to address your concern. Um, and I can put it up for you and I can show it to you, but if we can approve the policy as the I'm, policy, the grant agreement as the grant agreement, and then take your motion and put it before the board for action, I think that would be cleaner rather than trying to tie all of this together to truly the policy. I have no qualms with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. We, we will get to that, Jay. And appreciate you bringing it uh, to the board's attention. The motion on the floor is to approve the technical, approve the cost share, approve the millions of dollars. <laughs> I was looking for the total, but it's, 
it's in there. The motion on the floor is that Soil and Water Conservation Board approve the policy and procedures uh, for the cost share and technical assistance funding allocations for fiscal year 2022 to a grand total of $73,770,964. A lot of money. Do I have a motion? Mr. Yes. Chairman, yes, and I move. Oh, I, I have a motion. motion. Yeah, this is just discussion. Okay. Yeah, so you need Lisa to take the roll to right. approve it. I'm, it's a good thing they have staff here to keep me straight, or I. <laughs> well, let's, let's just move the motion twice, and then we can be extra sure. That's exactly right. <laughs> Better safe than sorry. Uh, you have the motion. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. I will ask Lisa to call the roll. Chairman Arneson? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Ms. Mason? Can you hear me? Yes, there you are. <laughs> Stocky Blum? Aye. Mayberry? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. Thank you. The motion passes. The next order of business is the cost share and technical assistance grant agreement, which we have already mentioned. Christina, would you care to address that? Sure. No changes have been made to this document since the April board meeting. And if we, I would say if um, we address this action item after this, we can, um, I'll show the motion that we drafted to address Mr. Attempt to address Mr. Ford. Sure. Comment. All right. So what, what we're having is is the agreement that's already been approved by all the powers that be, including the OAG and, and whatnot, for the fiscal year 2022. And the motion is uh, to approve the cost share grant agreement, cost share and TA grant agreement. Do I have a motion? Yes, sir. This is Charles Newton. I'll make that recommended motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? This is Dahlia, and I'll second. Thank you, Doctor. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will uh, ask those to take a vote on the motion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. I will ask Lisa to call the roll. Chairman Arneson? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Ms. Mason? Aye. Ms. Saki Blunt? Aye. Ms. Mayberry? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. Thank you very much. The motion carries. I think this is a very appropriate time to bring up uh, Jay's suggestion, and uh, we have a, a, a draft draft motion to to address the whole question of DEI. Well, not the whole no. question. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just, just no. how we as a board handle DEI in our cost share agreements and uh, allocations of funds going forward. So, Christine, if you'll put that up and talk to that. It is up. Um, this is draft language that, based on conversations, as um, Mr. Ford mentioned, um, we have all had. Um, I hope this gets to your intent, but we can edit if we need to. Um, as it's currently drafted, the Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board directs the department, in collaboration with the Office of the Attorney General, to examine possible methods and mechanisms the board, the department, and soil and water conservation districts could utilize to be more intentionally inclusive of underserved and disadvantaged communities in the marketing and delivery of the Virginia Agricultural Best Management Practices Cost Share Act Program. The board directs the department to provide recommendations and suggestions to the board at the December 2021 meeting. Okay. 
Um, let, I think for ease of handling this, we'll, we'll um, ask ask for the motion to be moved and seconded, and then we will have discussion. So, would anyone care to move this motion? This is Cat. I'll move this motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Mason will. Okay. All right, thank you. Now, uh, Jay, would you like to start the discussion? Sure, I, I feel like I probably uh, probably did most of my discussion already, but um, you know, this I think is um, something we've heard at a lot of districts um, that we've heard generally in, around state expenditures. Um, and it's been a really important conversation over the last two years, and that's our um, tax dollars and our government services and um, the, are they representative of Virginia's population? Um, and are they, are we meeting the diversity and equity and inclusivity objectives of the Commonwealth? And um, I think it's, it's a laudable goal in of itself, but it's one that we also have to consider within the confines of our um, charge as the Soil and Water Conservation Board. And I, I think it um, falls in line quite well because one of the most effective uses of conservation practices is bringing farmers into a conservation mindset. Um, and I think we, we've talked about this before, the idea that we really didn't want to set up a program where we were just creating um, recurring payments to uh, individual farmers each year. The goal is to spread the good word about soil and water conservation, which means expanding the universe of participants. Because once you have someone in the door, they see the benefit. They recognize that the cover crop is helping them hold on to their soil, that it's giving them long-term fertility, and that in other instances, they're able to identify new sources of revenue on their land while meeting our primary objective of cons conservation. So for me, uh, again, while a laudable objective on its own, um, looking for ways to um, meet the Commonwealth's objectives for DEI, uh, DEIJ are perfectly in line with our conservation objectives because it leads to us expanding the universe, breaking out of our traditional circles and spreading the, uh, the word about conservation. So we have more buy-in across all sectors. So um, that's been my, um, that's been within my brain as I've been playing 20 questions with Christine and, and Daryl and, and they've been uh, absolutely wonderful with all of my complete ignorance about a lot of things <laughs> in the program. So I'm really appreciative to them. And I'm excited about some of the uh, pilot work that we see the agency undertaking. But uh, as I said earlier, this um, there's only so much that the staff can do by themselves. And the, the power of the soil and water districts is that they're on the ground and they have local connections and they're in the communities all the time. And so if this is something we're going to be serious about um, and intentional, then we need to find a way to um, incorporate it into our agreements, into our relationship with the district as a board. So I'll leave it at that for now, and, unless anyone else wants to uh, talk. Thank you very much, Jay. Excellent point. Oh, hey, Mr. Chair, this is Pam. If, if I might um, add to that, um, I want to thank Jay for um, raising this issue. I know I had, when I first joined the board, I had asked some questions about um, some of our cost share relative to um, underserved communities and was told, well, we don't really know any of the answers to that. And I thought that was a little disappointing. Um, and I think it's important that we have a sense of, of how the money goes out and where it goes. Um, the only question I, I have is, is perhaps a consideration of a favorable amendment, um, Jay, in that do we want this to only focus on VAX or should it be on VAX and VCAP? In other words, should we just be a little bit more inclusive about the programs that we're talking about um, offering out into those communities? Because 
In the Colonial District, we've already started um, an initiative in this regard and trying to um, actually we have um, funding support to work this year on um, underserved. And so we're also, from that perspective, we're considering some of the, um, you know, maybe the lower income neighborhoods, um, rentals and things like that. And so I think that there's maybe some more opportunity also in the VCAP program to be a little bit more inclusive. Um, so I just, but I don't want to water down your, um, your your motion. So. My concern for VCAP, while we are the pass-through source for the VCAP funds, we actually don't have any authority over how that program is administered. Um, so, in terms of grant agreement and policies, we will we have far more authority over how those programs are marketed and. Um, efforts that could be undertaken to address some of these concerns. We really don't have that authority over VCAP. And yet we also want the expenditures. I think that we do have some authority over that. I mean, not in the same way. I understand. I appreciate the difference. But if we're not thinking creatively and exclusively, then it's going to be hard to address these issues. I would say, if, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Russ Baxter, if I may, uh, yeah, we we don't. Christine's absolutely correct. Is we don't have it. Program General Assembly uh, in the budget bill defines the amount of money that is provided to VCAP, and we pass it through to the districts association. And so I'm I'm I would share um, Christine's concern that we would be putting something in the motion for which we could not take any action. This may be an issue that you would wish to bring to the association itself as part of their policies and the administration of that program. Um, but we're simply the vehicle by which the General Assembly funnels the money uh, to the association for VCAP. Does that answer the VCAP? Uh, Thank you very much, Russ, once again. You've come to my aid. <laughs> I need your cell number. <laughs> uh, are there any other comments on the motion before us? Mr. Chairman, this is Clyde. If I could just make a comment. Um, <clears throat> uh, roughly three years ago now, uh, DCR started a diversity, equity, and inclusion um, effort that started with us setting up a committee. Um, and that committee uh, over the years has expanded that we now have two sort of major subcommittees. And I will admit that when we first started looking at DEI issues, our initial focus was on our record uh, as far as employment and being a more inclusive employer. Um, we quickly realized that there was a much bigger world out there and that part of it was looking at not only our internal DEI efforts, but also our external DEI efforts. And I think that this motion is very consistent with what we're doing in terms of looking at um, externally, I know that Daryl has already been doing some work, um, and I appreciate there was some discussion about the ability to gather uh, demographic information about cost share participants. Um, and I noticed that the motion shies away from that direction, although that's certainly something we can look at. But there was some sensitivity about, you know, requiring applicants for cost share money to have to divulge their um, the demographic information. Um, so. Um, so I think this is a good approach that we're taking here. I think it's consistent with what we're also doing. I also add that the General Assembly passed legislation this year that the governor's already signed the One Virginia Plan. And um, it, basically it was requiring all state agencies to develop uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, strategic plans. And I'm proud to tell you that there were two institutions in the uh, Commonwealth that had already done it before the legislation was signed into law, and that was with William and Mary and the Department of Conservation and Recreation. So um, again, I, I support this motion. I think it's very consistent with the activities that we already have underway um, and look forward to uh, coming up with some better strategies of how we can both uh, measure what we're doing now and know how we can do better in the future. Um, Daryl, anything else that that you would want to add with some of the external program review you're looking at? I would just like to inform the board. And I've mentioned, I think, in the last meeting that 
we will be starting up a two-year project with the Virginia State University Small Farm Outreach Project Program to have direct outreach to farmers of color to inform them about cost share and other DCR programs in order to try to draw up interest and additional sign up. So as that gets underway, uh, we also know that there's a, a considerable amount of interest from the Virginia Conservation Employees Association um, and a number of districts, and particularly in certain areas. So we, we think that within the coming year that you're going to see some significant progress. Um, but uh, given this time to December, uh, that should be adequate to bring back some some solid and pragmatic suggestions that we feel could be implemented. Thank you very much, Daryl. Are there any other comments before I take a vote? Uh, hearing none, you have the motion in front of you. I won't read it because it's not in front of me, but you have it. <laughs> so do I have, this has been moved, right? This, yeah. Yeah, this is moved and seconded. Don't let me do that again. <laughs> okay, so those in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. I will ask when Lisa to call the roll. Chairman Artisan? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Ms. Mason? Aye. Dr. Vaughn? Aye. Ms. Mayberry? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Jay, for bringing it to the board's attention. I, I think we've made a step forward here, but uh, it's only the first step. We've got a long ways to go, and a lot of people to help. So. The next order of agenda is the is the district appointment and, re and resignations. Yes. Have we got there already? We got there already. All right. Fifteen. Yeah. All right, you have typical resignations and appointments. Um, you have them from two districts this time, one Halifax and New River. Thank you. The motion is to uh, approve the appointments of the individuals being recommended. Do I, do I have a motion? This is Adam Wilson. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Um, I have a motion. Jay. We just seconded. I'm sorry. Yeah, for the record. Thank you. Okay. You got it? All right. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will take a vote on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, nay. And I will ask Lisa to call the roll. Chairman Arneson? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Ms. Mason? Aye. Ms. Dr. Blanc? Aye. Ms. Mayberry? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. The next item is the approval of the extension of certain 2015 livestock stream exclusion practices. Yes. So many of you all are aware of these practices. These are the backlog SL6 practices. Um, hopefully they're the last of them. In 2019, the General Assembly provided additional funds for these practices. Um, the grant agreement is set to expire on June 30th of this year. Additionally, um, there were some contracts that um, people had signed that were still outstanding um, for those. Um, we've been made aware that at this point there are several um, of these practices that are having problems getting materials. They are actively under construction um, but can't get spent, truthfully. Um, so we would like to offer an extension of a year for those practices that are actively under construction as of today. 
and funded either through the supplemental grant agreement or had completed the VAX contract part one by June 30th of 2015. So if they're truly what everybody refers to the backlog at cell six practice and they're actively under construction, they would have an additional year um, to complete their practice. Any contracts for backlog SL6 that does not meet those requirements needs to be canceled. Um, at this point, it's honestly probably to the participant's benefit for the, they, the practices have been revised enough. There are um, some different incentives that may actually be more financially beneficial for the participants. Right. I mean, the, the new the new materials list that would be if they cancel the, materials the, list, the material list. Is, is participant not. cap. There's now a buffer payment. There's some right difference. A lot of things have changed since 2015. Correct. But if you're trying to get the practice in place, you know, it's good. Uh, are there any questions for staff on this? Hearing none, um, the motion is to approve the extension to 30 June with the very stipulations that it must be under construction by May 20th, which is today, and funded either by the supplemental uh, cost share or the uh, FLA, FL, SL6, SL6. And any contract of a backlog SL6 practice is not actively under construction by May 20th must be canceled. So that, that's the motion you have it in front of you. Do, do I have a motion? Yes, uh, Charles would like to move the motion. Thank you, second. Do I have a second? This is Daly, I second. Thank you. Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? Okay, just to Great. make sure that I'm straight on the, this is Kristen, excuse me, Chairman. Um, so it's the June 30th, 2022 extension date. Is that right? Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. So they have okay, to be you. they have to be actively working as of today. Thank you. Yes. Any further questions? Okay. You have a motion in front of you. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Those opposed nay. I will ask Lisa to call the roll. Chairman Arnson. Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Mason? Aye. Saki Blum? Aye. Mayberry? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. Thank you. The motion passes. Next is the approval of the retention of public participation guidelines, regulations. Uh, Christine. This board took action on December 16th of last year to initiate the periodic reviews of these regulations. No comments have been received. Therefore, um, we would like to retain them as they are. Um, and we are requesting that um, authority to um, submit the decision to retain the regulation without change in accordance with the Administrative Process Act, Executive Order 14 as amended in 2018, and other applicable policies and procedures. That, that is the motion that was just read to you. Uh, do, I ha do I have a motion? I'll move that. This is Kat. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second is Adam Wilson. Thank you. Is there any discussion or questions for staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Sam Mason with just one question. So single, literally no, no comments whatsoever. Literally none. Oh. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Those opposed nay, I will ask Lisa to call the roll. Chairman Arneson? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Mason? Aye. Stumpy Blunt? Aye. Mayberry? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. 
All right, the next order of uh, business is the recommendation for board membership. Christine. Thank you. These are the nominations that were received from the Virginia Association of Soil and Water Conservation Districts for the two seats on this board with the terms expiring on June 30th of this year. The association has consulted with both the Virginia Farm Bureau and the Agribusiness Council on these nominations. The nominations represent areas two and area five. So you have to abstain. <laughs> I have to abstain. Can, can I call the vote? Or should I turn it over to the vice chair? Go ahead, Adam, would you take this vote? Yes, I will. Uh, okay, we have the recommended motion up to approve. Look at that. There we there go. go. All right, we have the Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board accepts the nominations of the Virginia Association of Soil and Water Conservation Districts and, dis and directs staff to forward these nominations to the Secretary of the Commonwealth for consideration for appointment. Do I hear such a motion? This is Charles Newton. I'd like to make the motion and congratulate our uh, chairman that he's eligible for another term on our board. So that's wonderful. And I second it, Kristen Sackey-Blank. I agree with Mr. Newton. So we have a, uh, a motion has been made and properly seconded. Uh, I'll ask uh, Lisa to call the roll. All in favor signify by saying aye. Likewise, no. Chairman Arneson? Abstain. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Ms. Mason? Aye. Aye. Mayberry? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. All right. Thank you. The motion carries. Uh, Mr. Arneson, I'll now turn the meeting back over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. Okay, is there any old business to come before this board? Hearing none, we'll move to new business, and there is new business. Uh, the first one uh, is appointing of a consulting committee pursuant to the impounding structures regulations. Who's speaking to this? I will. Okay. Um, but I may call on you, Wendy, if I need to. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, the board act has the authority in the impounding structure regulations to convene a consulting committee when there are questions of safety regarding plans and specifications, construction alteration, um, operation and maintenance. Um, Lake Akatink Dam in Fairfax County, which is owned by the um, Park Authority of Fairfax County, um, has been sort of at an impasse for the last several years. Um, they, so what we would actually like to do is convene a consulting committee to evaluate the hydraulic and hydrologic um, aspects of this dam to satisfy status by questions of safety related to an alteration and operation and maintenance of the impounding structure. Um, the Park Authority has agreed to um, that this could be a way to solve the impasse. Um, so we're requesting that one, the board approve the appointment of the consulting committee, and two, that you authorize the cost and expenses expenses incurred by the consulting committee to be paid from the dam safety flood prevention and protection assistance fund um, in accordance with 10.1603.19 item c and we're not expecting the cost or expenses to exceed seventy five thousand um, dollars i believe the last time the board approved the consulting committee was probably for hydro the use of hydroturf back in 2017. So this is not a provision that um, is relied on heavily, but it, it has been used before and um, may be a way to move um, Lake Akatink closer to full compliance. Thank you. Is there any other questions for staff? I, I, I'm just curious, 
I know where Lake Akatik is. How many people live below that dam? Um, is there a number? I don't think there was a number in the background document. It was 220 homes, five businesses, one school. 220 homes, yeah. Two railroads and six roadways. Right. 220 homes. There's a lot of people down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the motion is that we approve the appointment of a consulting committee to evaluate the hydrological and hydraulic aspects of Lake Akatik Dam. Uh, we authorize the cost to expend not to exceed $75,000, and we authorize the department to communicate this approval to the Virginia Resource Authority so that costs incurred may be reimbursed from the fund. Uh, do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, this is Pam. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? Mr. Nsaki Blanca, second. Thank you. Uh, is there any further discussion or comment for the staff? Um, yes, I want this make them one question. Um, so I'm just, I guess I'm just curious that $75,000 in some ways seems like a lot of money, but on the other hand, to do what seems to be at being asked, um, I'm wondering if that is adequate, if there's some sort of estimate that has already been provided that that we are using that to target that $75,000 cost. Thank you for the question. This is Wendy Howard Cooper. We do not have a firm estimate yet how, for this particular project. However, um, as mentioned in the background document, we expect to work with the Army Corps, the Norfolk District, and the Baltimore District to get this study done. And based on work um, that they are currently doing for us for the um, assistance to state projects, um, that amount seems reasonable and adequate. Thank you, Wendy. Great, thank you. Follow-up hey, follow um, Mr. Chair, this is Charles Newton with a follow-up question. Wondered if, uh, if the turns out that our estimates are low, uh, would the department then have to come back to the board to ask for an increase, or is there some way that we can give them flexibility in case the uh, engineering turns out to be more expected than, you know, more than expected. The way it's currently drafted, we would need to come back for additional authority. Um, I, I think it's prudent at this point to, to leave that in there. I, I don't, don't want to leave a, a, an open-ended agreement or a carte blanche and not, not knowing uh, what would happen. At least we have an idea of what we think it should cost. If, it's, if it exceeds that, I, I would prefer it come back to the board. That, that's I, I would. Fine with me, I just I thought it should ask the question. So this is this is Wendy Howard Cooper. Um, the seventy five thousand dollars should be sufficient to cover the full cost of a study. Um, working with the core through the public uh, assistance, um, the assistance to states project, they could offer a fifty percent cost share for that activity. So it may be much less. Um, but if we have to pay for full cost of the study based on existing cost estimates for other projects, this allows us sufficient funds and overrun. So this should be sufficient. And if it is not, we will come back to the board and provide detailed information as to why it was not. Thank you for that clarification, Wendy. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, the motion is that we approve the appointment of the consultant. I've already read it. I haven't read it. We've already got a so, Pam and Kristen both. Right, we have a, we have a motion. discussion. I, I get so carried away with this, these votes. I just like keep reading things. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Lisa, please call the roll. Cameron Aronson. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mr. Ford. 
Aye. Ms. Mason? Aye. Dr. Blunt? Aye. Mayberry? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. Okay. Uh, we have another item. We do. Um, this was a response to the board member a re board member request. It's a motion to prioritize wetlands and buffer restoration through secondary considerations. Um, Pam, I'm going to let you handle this one. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, Kristen. So I think I mentioned at the end of our last board meeting that um, being as I am co-chair of the wetlands work group for the Chesapeake Bay program and I'm very, very highly aware of where Virginia and its partners are in um, our wetland, rest, wetland restoration goals and also being very in touch with the riparian forested goals, um, recognizing that we are, we are woefully far behind um, in reaching those goals and being um, also um, a scientist at the Center for Coastal Resources Management at VIMS that specifically studies the co-benefits of a lot of these habitat features, um, appreciating the fact that not only do they provide water quality benefits, but um, water cooling benefits, erosion control, lots of um, habitat for both aquatic and terrestrial fauna, um, contribute to healthy waters, carbon storage, and um, and in certain cases also flood and climate resiliency support. So um, I thought that one small step would be to highlight um, the use of these two practices as um, as solutions to address issues, particularly on those lands in the Chesapeake Bay preservation areas. So. I pulled together um, this potential motion that you can see on the screen. Um, I think you can read it for yourself, but um, I thought it would be a small step in trying to encourage the use of those two practices to, to offset any issues um, with lands that, again, are in Chesapeake Bay preservation areas. So if anybody has questions for me. Uh, Pam, I, I, would take, I would take it that you are moving this motion, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. And do I have a second? I second it. I do have questions. Okay, then that's fine. We have a motion and it's been seconded. I have to make a note of that so I don't forget it. Now we're open for questions and discussion, so go right ahead. And I, 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 I guess the first question I have, and I apologize, but was this, was this Pam, given to us in advance of the meeting? I, I didn't see it in my notes. So this, or is this a motion that's coming forward without uh, advance notice? I, yes, I mean, I know we I, talked about last month. Yeah. Yeah. So um, no, I, it just it was put together um, two days ago, I guess, at this point. Yeah. So one of the things that um, was really abundantly clear to me in um, during the WIP process, the WIP development process with the states, is that uh, and particularly with the districts and the opportunity for wetland restoration in agricultural lands that where that the technical assistance for how to do that isn't is I mean there's there are some people who know how to do it well but it's disparate from district to district of course you know there's certain you know they, they, they all have different skill sets in terms of what their practices of of preference choice and skills are and the wetlands restoration piece as important as it was for the WIP, didn't get as much traction in Virginia as I had expected for the non-title areas particularly. And I think it's because we don't have a very deep technical uh, capacity for, for carrying it out at the district level. And if I, I may be incorrect, but I, I, I just, that, that's my greatest concern. And I think that anything that we do here has to really uh, look at what the um, how we're going to develop the capacity for for furthering that practice technically excellent point uh, and I, I think there will be more to follow on with this what we are encouraging at this point we are encouraging the districts to look at these priorities that that's the first step but there are there are other steps in the process as we 
uh, define the manual for next year and, and the practices. So. And Mr. Chair, if I may, I, I don't disagree with Kristen. However, I do know that there's often a cart and horse thing with all these practices. And when we, we create an interest, people will show up. Um, I've had lots of conversations with Daryl as of late on our S SL2, which is our Living Shorelines practice in back. And um, we've had some issues with that too, with regard to capacity and sort of response from the technical community. And and I and I do think that um, it, I'm not certain that, it, that that if you don't create some interest, then then there will be more response. Um, on the other hand, while the wetlands might be a little more complicated, riparian buffers are not nearly as complicated. And so I think that we have lots of practitioners. And in fact, I just noted we added a new board member starting July 1 whose expertise is in riparian buffer restoration. So I'm, I'm hoping to sort of maybe lay the groundwork by just slowly moving into this space by kind of just starting with the Chesapeake Bay lands and, and only as a secondary. So, and only as a secondary consideration, right? So it, it's, it's not like going way up to the top. Um, so that, that was my thinking in starting this this moving this way. Yeah, and on, on the right train buffers, um, Mr. Chairman, I just say that I, it, it, the James River Association and the Middle James and Upper James Riparian Buffer Consortium has significantly advanced the science of riparian buffer implementation in agricultural areas. And we're already seeing a ripple effect with how that's impacting how buffers are going in in the Rappahannock and in the Shenandoah basins. And um, that's been really exciting and, and really big, big shout out to DCR and, uh, and forestry in particular for being a part of that collaborative. Absolutely. I think that's been a great example. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, this is Russ Baxter. May I just ask a technical question? Certainly. Um, uh, Pam, is the, I had missed this when in looking at the motion, but would it be, wouldn't it be better or more correct to say, particularly in Chesapeake Bay Preservation Act localities, as opposed to preservation areas, which in some cases are countywide, but in some cases are not. That um, that probably would be preferred. I was trying to copy paste this from um, the the words that are in already in the secondary considerations that mention Chesapeake. I think it says Chesapeake Bay Preservation Area Agriculture Land, and I think I just yeah, switched that to locality. Be, those would be okay if that was the intention. I understand now because those would be agricultural lands that fall within county or city defined uh, Chesapeake Bay preservation areas, either the RPA um, or the RMA. Is that correct? Right. I missed okay. that in my copy. So that if we if we wanted to amend that, I'd be happy to. I was trying to talk to the I was unclear as to the, as to the genesis of that. So um, I think that the language is probably all right as it is. Um, but it, it could be broader if, if you wanted to make it just the act as opposed to area, but um, probably not necessary. And just uh, this is the last thing I'll ever try to ask, tell the board anything. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Um, my question and suggestion for change. Mr. Chairman Clyde here. I just wanted to point out that we have two specific comments in the chat related to the motion. I wanted to draw your attention to those. Um, Martha Moore stated that we would hope this item would be allowed to have more thorough discussion through the Ag BMP tech process before the board adopts to make sure tools and technical assistance availability. And then Greg Wilkins with Culpeper District said under VAX, a wetland would likely be an engineered practice. The applicant would be hiring an engineer or other, and that is allowed an allowable expense so actually technical planning would likely be provided by a licensed professional so i just wanted to share those two items in the chat box to make sure that folks saw them uh, good good point good point director that uh, of course anything that we go forward will will go through the TAC process sure are there any other comments before we vote on this motion 
Could, uh, just, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Jay Ford. I have a technical question, and then based on the comments, I, I'd love to ask staff a follow-up. So the first is, um, Pam, where does this item land if we vote on it? Are we, would this then be language inserted into the secondary consideration section that we just voted on? I guess I'm just trying to understand what what happens if we were to pass this. Well, I just thought perhaps Christine would, would give a little context to that since she's actually the one that is the policy expert for this. Um, but my understanding is we've already voted on the secondary considerations, so this would be adoption of a policy. And so it would just be sort of, it would be a recommendation, not a requirement at this point. Do I have that right, Christine? You do. It would just be an overarching statement by the board encouraging districts. Um, so <coughs> it's okay. not necessarily inserted into any of the documents that have previously been approved. It's sort of an overarching guiding principle, I guess. Mm -hmm. And of course, it would be looked at by the TAC and, and codified or further furthered next year. Well, that was going to be my or one of my follow-up questions, Mr. Chairman. So, if we made a, a general statement here, and let me say this is a, a great general statement. I, I think that the um, conservation benefits of um, the wetlands and riparian buffers are undeniable um, and I think there's a consensus that we'd like to see increased implementation so I, I strongly agree with the sentiment here but so once this was passed the hope would be that the TAC would then take this under consideration to further the objective through the manual that might is that how people are understanding next steps here I see Russ nodding Mr. Chairman, is that how you understand it? Yes, yes, Jay. Uh, we, you know, we, we'll look at uh, at the whole SL2 and then other other practices and other other things every year when we do the tax subcommittees and and go through the process. What we're saying is we're we're for it now, and then we will as as a, it blossoms into next year's um, manual, we'll we'll be able to codify it in definitive terms. So this is this is just the, the will of the board going forward. And Mr. Chairman, if I may make one additional observation, this is Pam again. Um, being that um, the state has is obviously very um, highly committed, uh, financially anyway, to actually doing this conservation work. Um, it seems that it also might lay the groundwork for these practices that, that sometimes are more expensive than some of the other practices. And that was my other thinking, was to sort of take advantage of the, the, the great interest um, and commitment to, to promote those things that may have not been as highly um, promoted, being that they're, a little bit, that they're more expensive. And so I was looking at that sort of um, juxtaposition. Agreement. Thank you. Are there any other comments on the motion? Hearing none, Chairman, I'll... there's another comment in the chat uh, from Martha Moore, um, who is, says, "But this would be applicable for the fiscal year that starts July 1st, 2021. So it would be better to have discussions for incorporation for the next fiscal year." Um, I don't think there's a date on this, and so it would just by naturally uh, move to the TAC as they begin their discussions for the next, uh, as preparing for the manual for the next program year, uh, if that satisfies Martha's comment. Yeah, that, that is correct. We've already, we, we, we're getting ready to send the money out and the, the guidance for this year, which it would be awful hard to try to change the language now, but going forward, the TAC needs to look at it and uh, come back with recommendations. So thank you for that comment. Are there any other comments? Hearing none, I will ask all those in favor of this motion signify by saying aye, those opposed nay, and I will turn to Lisa for the roll call. Chairman Arneson. Aye. 
Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Ms. Mason? Aye. Ms. Saki Blanc? Aye. Ms. Mayberry? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Charles Newton? Aye. Thank you, the motion passes. And, and this is a first step. We will continue to watch this and, and develop this line of uh, goal for the future. Uh, I have nothing on my agenda, but I think there's one late arrival in the business. There is, um, I'm gonna let Wendy do this one. All righty. Thank you, and I appreciate you all indulging me on this late arrival. Um, just a little background. Um, in March of 2019, the board approved DCR working with the Norfolk District of the Army Corps of Engineers on a pilot project um, through the planning assistance to state grant that the Corps operates. That pilot project was to work with Southampton County and City of Franklin to do a two-phase project. The first phase was to look at dams in both communities in totality to make assessments on whether those dams were regulated. The second phase of that project is to actually complete um, inspections dam break inundation studies, hazard classifications, emergency action plans, and flood studies as necessary so that we could have two full communities fully covered with dam risk information. The phase one of that study was completed and I received uh, in the last day or two um, estimates from the core on the cost for phase two, which is, as I said, to actually do those studies to engage with the dam owners. We've already gotten permission from the localities. All of that groundwork has been laying, but the, the cost is higher than what the initial estimate was. The original motion asked to use $300,000 from the Dam Safety Flood Prevention and Protection Assistance Fund to conduct the project. In addition, the motion also talked about, um, the background talked about expanding this project to other localities. We've also engaged the Baltimore District Corps to assist us in doing the same type of project in a locality still to be determined in Northern Virginia. Um, and so what I'm asking today is that we amend this motion to add an additional 7,000, I'm sorry, up to $700,000 um, for this project so that we can not only complete phase two of the Norfolk District project, but begin and hopefully implement fully phase two of the Baltimore District project. project. Okay, so we're asking to uh, add an additional four? 700,000. Additional 700,000, not uh, over the 300,000. Correct, yes. Okay. So it would be a total of a million, correct, Wendy? Adding the 300,000? That is correct. That would be to, to complete the two phases, the, the second phase of both studies with the core at Norfolk and uh, Baltimore, so. Correct. It may okay. also allow us to add additional localities depending on the cost. We're just not sure yet because we haven't, uh, we haven't finished the Baltimore scoping, um, but based on what we see in the Norfolk scoping, the, the cost for these studies, we initially thought would be 20 to 40, and now they're um, estimating it's 40 to 70. 
for each um, dam to do the full scope of those studies. And there are uh, 13 studies that have to happen in Southampton and City of Franklin. All right, thank you for that. Um, the way we want to do this is we're going to, I'm going to ask for the motion first, and then we will have the uh, comments and discussion. So the motion would be to increase the fund to $1 million to cover the aforementioned projects with the Corps in Norfolk and Baltimore, uh, and the cities of Hampton and uh, and Franklin. Franklin. Stop Hampton. So that, would, that would be the motion. To, go ahead. Would anybody care to move that motion? Mr. Chairman, Jay Ford, I'll, I'll move the motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? Yes, this is Charles Newton. I'll, I'll second the motion. Okay, the motion has been moved and seconded. Now it's time for questions and discussion. Uh, are, there, are there any comments, questions, or discussion? Yes, this is Charles. Uh, Wendy, do you, can you give us an idea when you say Northern Virginia is the target? What what counties might possibly be included? Would it be only Fairfax and Loudon, or would it move down to as far as Culpeper, or where where are you talking about? Right now, we are evaluating Frederick county um what we have done it, in phase one of this project with the norfolk district they did the initial assessments and um, we based our decisions on what they did in the baltimore district we have started doing our own assessments through a simplified mapping process and the phase one of the project won't be necessary in the baltimore district through that initial assessment, we have identified several communities and Frederick seems to be the most likely um, group that we, most likely locality that we will use, but I needed to secure this um, motion before I could engage Baltimore district officially to see which community we actually wanna land on. Does that answer your question? I, I guess so. What What are the criteria for picking the communities? Uh, is, are you trying to great, find great one question. most uh, people downstream or what, what are the criteria? Great question. Um, in our initial assessment for these dams, um, we first, of course, looked at any dams that would meet regulatory height. Then in assessing which communities we wanted to look at, we also looked at the vulnerability, vulnerability index in those communities, the number of dams that were out of compliance with regulation and the number of those dams that had the potential to be high hazard. So that is how we are selecting the locality. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for Wendy or comments? Hearing none, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, I, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. And I will ask Lisa to call the roll. Cameron Arneson? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Ms. Mason? Aye. Saki Zon? Aye. Mayberry? Aye. Dr. O'Brien? Aye. Mr. Newton? Aye. All right, the motion passes. Uh, thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Uh, are there any, is there any public comment here? Uh, we're, we're at the, unfortunately, we're at the end of our agenda unless somebody on the board wants to bring up something else. So it's, uh, 
Mr. Chairman, this is Clyde. If I could just uh, bring up one other quick item I'd like to share with you. Um, I have just been given permission to release this information, but I want to recognize each year the University of Virginia Institute for Engagement and Negotiation that runs the Virginia Natural Resources Leadership Institute. And each year the Virginia Natural Resource Leadership Institute recognizes someone with for the McCarthy Award for Leadership and Environmental Conflict Resolution. Um, and that is normally formally done at their June graduation of the Virginia Natural Resource Leadership Institute. Unfortunately, they're not gonna be having an in-person graduation. They're gonna actually trying to hold an in-person graduation in October. However, I am pleased and honored to announce that our own Daryl Glover has been uh, it has been chosen to receive the McCarthy Award this year. Uh, so Daryl, add that to his his trophy case, a very well deserved uh, uh, recognition. Uh, and some of the factors in in that decision this year with Daryl were was certainly his work with the uh, small farm outreach program, in addition to all the work that he's done over the last few years in the Chesapeake Bay Watershed Implementation Plan and also his incredible work with the 47 soil and water conservation districts working with this board to administer the agricultural cost share program so uh daryl i wanted to just have a moment to give a shout out for the board to hear that great news for you uh, thank you very much Clyde. I, I knew you find a way to embarrass me for the day <laughs> thank you and that, that's good news daryl uh, Congratulations from the board. If there's no other business for the board, I will announce that the next meeting is in September. You actually can take the summer off. I will move that this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody.